Hello everyone, Hyper here, and in today's video I will show you how to parse on Mythic Stormwall Blockade as an Unholy DK. Now, this fight is fairly straightforward, and luckily there is not much variance. The only thing that really varies from guild to guild is where you bloodlust and your push timings. We bloodlust in the second phase, um, and even in the second phase it's at a pretty particular point, mainly because of healing cooldowns and the way all of our DPS cooldowns line up. I know a few guilds are still bloodlusting on pull to help with the damage check. So depending on your strategy, this might change a little bit, but it will only impact where you use Army of the Dead. So as far as talent setup, I use default on Holy build. Um, I do run the Grip of the Dead talent because once you have two adds, slowing them with Death and Decay is actually really beneficial for the raid. While the adds are only coming one by one, I don't really bother slowing them anymore. I did on progress, but now they die quick enough where my slow doesn't actually change whether or not they will or will not get to the boss. However, once we get the double adds, I always drop death and decay on them because we are not killing those adds. So we want them to get to the boss as slow as possible. And then I run Epidemic. Uh, it will be of no use in this first phase. But in the second phase, especially when you get sirens that spawn close to the boss, uh, and when you get the double set of adds, which I will talk about later, it does become a DPS gain. So let's roll the footage here. Like I said, uh, we are not using Bloodlust on pull, so I will not be using Army of the Dead. So I just pre-pot, go in, and use all my cooldowns except for Army. The way our timings work out and the way the DPS works out, I actually end up using two sets of cooldowns in this first phase. Now, depending on how you are pushing this first boat, uh, you might end up either using one or two sets of cooldowns. I've tried both and they both work quite well depending on where you lost. So if you lost um, in the second phase and you notice that your cooldowns are offset by about 30 seconds, either way, then you can choose to either use your second set of cooldowns on this first boat or not. And I will touch on that a little bit later on in this fight. So our strategy here is fairly simple. We bait all the puddles in the center of the room. Now on the other boat with brother Joseph, he has less HP than sister Catherine. So you actually want to have your burst tier classes on sister Catherine because you need to push her a little bit faster. And most of the time, you will end up being on the Sister Catherine boat because it is way more melee friendly than the one Joseph starts on. So here our DH actually uh, falls off due to a bug uh, with Felrush, and I tried to res him, but he's like behind the boat or under the boat, so I'm not able to get him. Now here it's pretty much just keep your dots on both targets, cleave down this Siren, and since we are using Epidemic, you can choose to Epidemic even though the targets are split. Overall, you will get about the same damage um, as if you were to use Death Coil, but you're just splitting your damage on two targets. So I, I thought about this quite a lot um, in one of my workshops. With Epidemic, when you have two targets that are split, you will end up getting about the same amount of damage it will really just come down to what type of damage are you looking for. Are you actually trying to kill both targets at about an equal pace? Or are you just trying to burn down one of the targets? If you're trying to burn down one of the targets, then you should death coil. Uh, if you just want overall damage or split damage between the two, then you epidemic. And you will actually end up at about the same numbers. Now we port over to this main platform. As on Holy DK, we are a pet class, obviously. When you port over to this main platform and your Dark Transformation button is either, I don't know what setting you might have, for me it turns red if my pet is out of range, that means your pet is stuck on the boat. And that happens about 50% of the time, so if your pet ends up being stuck on the boat, I suggest having a Dismiss Pet macro and also having your Summon Pet keybound. So in that case, you just need to quickly dismiss your pet and resummon him and then he will be able to hit the boss. Otherwise, he will be stuck on the boat for a while, and you just lose out on pet damage. Now, we bait the first set of sea swells here in the center, then we jump up on the pillar. Uh, mechanically, as a melee, this fight is very, very simple. Basically, you just kite the sea swells, and you, know, you don't have much to deal with. As a DK, if you're progging this fight, you will have to drop your death and decay on the adds, 
depending on what comp you're running. If you're running double blood DK, for example, you won't have to, but we are only running one blood DK and having that slow on the adds on progress, it was very, very nice because it is a 90% slow that decays over time, but it is the most effective slow that you can drop on them as long as you rotate it correctly. Now with these sirens, with the sirens, you will essentially have four possible spawns, right? Two on the right side, two on the left side. If the siren spawns close to the boss, you're able to use outbreak on it and your dot will spread to the boss. This means that it is within epidemic range. So if you're pressing epidemic, they will be cleaving each other. So in that case, epidemic will be more beneficial to press than death coil will. Also, you can see this energized storm get closer and closer to the boss. About where the storm is, uh, maybe five yards forward, is where the boss's hitbox actually ends. And that means that that is where you can start using your epidemic to be cleaving the boss and that add. So again, the hitbox on this boss is very, very weird since he, is a, he has a huge character model and he's stuck in the water. You have quite a few options to use epidemic because of his large hitbox. So you can see I'm obviously charmed here, so I can't dot up that ad. But this ad here, I can already be using Epidemic and it will be cleaving both the boss and the ad. Same with the Sirens. If you get a close spawn, so that means that the Siren is in the closer position to the boss, then you can dot up that Siren, it will spread to the boss, and then you can use your Epidemics to cleave both of those targets. If you get a far spawn, so it spawns in the back of the platform where the range typically start, then your epidemic will not be cleaving between the two targets. So again, you can epidemic just to get more damage and help out your enraged DPS, or you can just use the death coils on the boss. Now this is right here, probably the best situation you can get. Both sirens have spawned in melee. And these spawn points allow me to cleave three targets with my epidemic. The damage from my epidemic will cleave between the boss and the left siren and between the boss and the right siren. So this is the best case scenario. On progress, whenever the sirens spawned in the back positions, I usually either just toss the dot on them or if it was the first siren, that tends to be burned down pretty quickly by the range DPS on progress, so I didn't even bother dotting it up. Now the second energized storm, uh, we're just looking to kill it. And we are getting, we are going to be bloodlusting pretty soon here. I believe our, yeah, right there. So at 420 something, uh, we use Bloodlust. Within Bloodlust, I just pop my army, I pop all my cooldowns, and I use my second potion. So right here, you saw that I built up five wounds on the target, and I saved up three runes. As soon as all of that came together, I used my army, I used my second potion, I just popped it there, and I just go ham on this boss. So just because your guild or your raid popped Bloodlust, don't think that you immediately have to use all of your cooldowns because that is not the case. I used to do this a lot um, when whenever Bloodlust was popped, I was like, oh my god, I only have one of my three cooldowns up and I would just go ahead and pop it instead of just waiting for that ideal overlap. Uh, keep in mind that Bloodlust is 45 seconds and your army lasts 30 seconds. So you have 15 seconds of wiggle room of setting up a good army with a good set of cooldowns. So that actually makes a significant difference in your overall damage. Now we have this, the set of two adds, and as you can see, I dotted them up um, as soon as I could. And right here, they get within melee range, and I start using Epidemics. So as soon as they're in melee range, uh, this actually ends up being the best case scenario. They get into melee range, and they start casting on the boss. Now I drop the ND on them just to slow them. But here I'm getting huge amounts of damage. So as you can see, I'm going up on the meter uh, quite nicely. And I also help out here with AMS and I use that advanced so I don't get knocked away just to get extra runic power to be able to pump out more epidemics. But this kill timing actually worked out to be very, very good for my overall damage. And if I remember correctly, this was a rank two at the time of recording, which was two weeks ago or two resets ago. So overall, this was one of the fights that I've been pretty strong on this expansion. Um, I think I got rank one the first few weeks, and then I've had several top, top fives and top tens on this fight. But yeah, so like I said, this fight depends sorely on how you use your cooldowns and where you bloodlust. If you bloodlust um, either earlier or later than we do, 
then you might opt to either saving or using your cooldowns in the second or in the first phase um, when they come up for the second time. So again, that just will depend on your kill time, your guild, and your strategy. Thank you guys so much for watching. And if you have any questions about this fight, uh, if there was anything that I did not explain particularly well, please let me know in the comment section and I will do my best to help you out. And if you want some general unholy tips, uh, make sure to check out my unholy DK guide. I have both written and video guides, whichever one you prefer, I got you. Again, thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you on the next one.